I think with UGC, authenticity is really, really important. I think that's kind of the key factor on whether you do well on social media, whether it's organic or paid, as long as you're honest and you kind of show yourself, your personality, that's what people will buy into. Absolutely. Yeah, people buy into people. That's what I was about to say. If yeah. people don't know what UGC is, is user generated content, mm -hmm. just in case people don't know. Yeah. But <laughs> it, it is, you have to, like, it's more powerful now because people buy into people, people buy into brands. So showing your face is just one a level of trust. And one, it just give people a little bit more perspective on the product than you as a person as well. Like I was going to say, in, in B2B, that's called a key KPI, it's a key person of interest. Mm. So when you've got a key person of interest, you build that personal brand by doing UGC and everything like that. But then it doesn't matter what you turn, you turn your, you know, you, you prof, your, what your profession is at that time, because you've got such a cult following. People then buy that product. Look at the Kardashians, love them or hate them, they're absolutely incredible marketers mm. in terms of what they turn their attention to and what they bring out in terms of business. People, they've got such a following. It doesn't matter what they bring out. They could bring out an April Fool's joke and people buy into it. So, in in S and and that with UGC, the way people are portraying themselves. Because before, it didn't matter what platform you use, Facebook would do different, like you, I don't know what Facebook was, probably more video content than Instagram at the start. Or LinkedIn was definitely a professional platform. You wouldn't have anyone doing UGC content. Now, it doesn't matter what platform, they've all had to catch up with TikTok in terms of where people's attention lies. I mean, the algorithms are constantly changing on any platform. So you have to really be on the ball. You have to constantly be watching and seeing what people are doing. But I mean, at the moment, for example, TikTok, which is a video, primarily a video content platform, photos do better and swiping photos is the best form Where on, whereas on Instagram which is primarily for photos videos are doing better so you just it's really unpredictable Hey guys, thanks for joining us today. We're going to be touching a little bit more on UGC, how like the evolution of UGC has come about, how you have to be a bit more personal branded um, and start to build that element of trust um, within the sense of making sure that your content is in line with your brand, um, cohesive, and then obviously builds the element of trust by showing your personality, by showing your face. Um, and I think that's the reason we got Josh, yourself um, as well, Josh, and uh, we like to introduce Issa, um, is that content is different in both your organic social media and your paid social media, but they're kind of developing and progressing in the same rate as what you used to post maybe a year ago in terms of paid media um, or in organic media is different to what you have to do now in terms of even I think there's the small little things like captions you've got to do. You've got to be creative within your captions. Before, you could probably just put on captions that didn't have fancy colouring, didn't have bubble writing, didn't have like flashy text to, to keep the attention. But I think we've got to blame like TikTok and uh, different quick um, social media platforms for the attention span of someone has now probably dropped to about two to three seconds. So if you're not instantly within organic or if you're not instant within your paid media, you've already lost the level of interest. Um, have you seen much change? Or what's the changes you've done, uh, both of you, where obviously you present your content? For me, like I, I just think with social media, with everything that changes all the time, like you just have to pivot anyway. Like it's the same as like Instagram. So Instagram is mainly a, like a photo like platform, mm. but because of now they're doing reels and they need to keep up with like platforms like TikTok, mm. they know how powerful reels are when videos are. So you have to adapt a little bit and do videos, depending on what your service is, whether you're selling a service or you've got a product, it's, you just have to pivot. Yeah, and I think it's, it's also increasing that you've got to see where there's that level of personal branding as well now. Mm. I think through conversations with yourself, conversations through Ryan's and obviously with East as well is like, you kind of now got to start showing your face a little bit more. Um, is that where you kind of see the, the progression going as well? Yeah, definitely. I think with UGC, authenticity is really, really important. Mm. I think that's kind of the key factor on whether you do well on social media, whether it's organic or paid, as long as you're honest mm. and you kind of show yourself, your personality, that's what people will buy into. 
Absolutely. Yeah, people buy into people. That's what I was about to say. If yeah. people don't know what UGC is, is user generated content, mm-hmm. just in case people don't know. Yeah. But <laughs> it, it is, you have to, like, it's more powerful now because people buy into people, people buy into brands. So showing your face is just one a level of trust. And one, it just gives people a little bit more perspective on the product than you as a person as well. Yeah, 100%. I think that's where with B2B as well, like, you, no matter what, even if you're not showing your, your face, you've still got a level of, personality that you've got to be uh, on b2b i presume the person might have seen 100 emails uh, is what you've got to do within your email templates i guess yeah and with business business in general now people like don't want to be associated with the corporate brands out there they want to be um swaying over to the one they believe like, to, like you said there people buying to people and it is same as b2b so mm. gone are the days where you're buying products just because of the brand. People are now buying products because of the people behind the brand. Yep. Um, I say all the time, look at you know Cristiano Ronaldo. It doesn't matter what football club he's been at, he's got more followers than that football club mm. because people bought into him as a football player and his lifestyle and stuff like that. I was going to say something. Do you know, you might not know, but NFL at the moment, um, I was reading something the other day, Taylor Swift has started to date um, Travis Kelsey. Yeah. Travis Kelsey is this free-time MVP of... Um, Super Bowl winner, like massive, probably one of the best in his position. But he started to date Travis, um, Taylor Swift now, and like, people are saying, "Oh, she's made him famous." Like the guy who had millions and millions of followers. But apparently, the the stocks in America, obviously, America is all about money and the stocks of that. The stock value since Travis Kelsey has started to date Taylor Swift, apparently, the Chiefs have increased by nearly three hundred percent on their stock value, and now they're already a billion pound corporation. But because of the the fault the cult following it, it, it bit much celebrities now have cult followings yeah like and you mentioned there like football players celebrities you you now get people that aren't a fan of a football team uh, and they'll change their allegiance to a football team depending on the player that follows it so and, go on sorry i was going to say in in b2b that's called a key, kpi it's a key person of interest hmm. so when you've got a key person of interest you build that personal brand by doing ugc and everything like that but then it doesn't matter what you turn, you turn your, you know, you, you prof, what your profession is at that time, because you've got such a cult following. People then buy that product. Look at the Kardashians, love them or hate them, they're absolutely incredible marketers mm. in terms of what they turn their attention to and what they bring out in terms of business. People, have, they've got such a following. It doesn't matter what they bring out. They could bring out an April Fool's joke and people would buy into it. So, in in S and and that with UGC, the way people are portraying themselves because before it didn't matter what platform you use facebook would do different like you i don't know what facebook was probably more video content than instagram at the start or linkedin was definitely a professional platform you wouldn't have anyone doing ugc content now doesn't matter what platform they've all had to catch up with tiktok in terms of where people's attention lies um and i don't know if you guys have found that in terms of doesn't matter what platform you use now no, um, like there's loads of platforms out there. And the, going back to content creation, I'm not too sure about you, Issa, but like there's so many apps that you can use now as well mm. to generate your content, like CapCut, um, you know, Captions. There's loads of apps that it's just going to help you with the business and yeah. just push your push it through the algorithm as well, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I think that's where you can kind of tell the experience of a UGC creator and not because some of those apps have those templates that won't do very well online. And they'll know that you've just gone and put in a load of videos and it's generated and done the work for you. And I think that kind of sometimes shows how you're not being as honest. I think viewers, viewers are smart. The audience out there are smart. And if you're putting in the work, they will notice that. Yeah. Do you find that with each platform, there's there's a different requirement to how you create content yeah definitely um i mean the algorithms are constantly changing on any platform so you have to really be on the ball you have to constantly be watching and seeing what people are doing but i mean at the moment for example tiktok which is a video primarily a video content platform Mm -hmm. photos do better and swiping Mm -hmm. photos is the best form whereas on instagram which is primarily for photos videos are doing better so you just it's really unpredictable it's constantly evolving and mm. and i think the best advice you can get and gary v says it all the time someone else who's built that following you know you wouldn't even know what company he's got half the time because you buy into him not necessarily the company he's got um is spending time on the platform do time that's what they say 
not in the prison sense, Josh, <laughs> but do time on the platform because you are going to learn what's working and what's not. Obviously, the algorithm then picks it up, but you, the more you see something, so before photos were doing well on TikTok, I think it was just literally putting text across and then obviously UGC content and it's constantly evolving. So it's just staying with the times as well. Yeah, I think it's it's that one where you, you've got to evolve or you're extinct. I yeah. think it's very much if you're not constantly looking free and it's it's somewhat hard to plan um for it, but you've still gotta be four or five months down the line and where you want your branding to go. You've got to have as much as it's constantly evolving, as much as you don't want to be left in what was working, um, you've also want to make sure that you have an element of branding incorporated in it all. You can't just go with the trends. You're your branding, your your persona you present has got to be relevant to the content you're creating because it's not, uh, you you mentioned the Kardashians, Gary Vee, Ronaldo, Taylor Swift. They all, they all have a set element of content and how they create it. But what they do is that they have a specific way of creating that content. The Kardashians will promote something in their own specific way. Beckham will promote his stuff, very elegant. You know, David Beckham's country, a country-based UK house, very elegant, flat caps, you know what I mean? Smooth whiskers and stuff like that. You know what his brand is. He isn't then going to go and promote AU vodka no. and stuff like that because that's not, it doesn't fit well for his brand. brand. His audience isn't going to buy into it. Your branding, your audience, your persona you're creating is then reliant on what you want to do. And that's where you have to be cohesive with what you do on your organics, what you do on your paid and what you do on your website as well. There's got to be a level of trust because if one of them is out of line, most market, most consumers are looking for a reason why not to purchase and not why to purchase. And if you give them a reason, an inkling of a, like a small smidge of a reason why not to purchase, they're, they're going to run with that. And it may be that that text is not the same and this text is not the same. Um, and that might be why you may lose it. But I think, like I said, you make sure that you've got to be consistent and cohesive. Um, so so let's, let's try and give some value out of this. So what... Is there any tips that you would recommend? Because obviously you're both in front of the camera quite a bit. Yeah. Um, what is there anything you would probably say, look, this is what I would recommend or I try that works for me. It doesn't mean it's necessarily going to work for everyone else because you need to try mm. and find your own path. But anything you think, this works well for me. With Instagram. So I, I still think like photos do well on Instagram. Sure. Um, reels do well, talking reels and stuff like that. So if you're not confident in front of the camera, then try and get confident. Um, to, but, but you, the only way you're going to get confident is giving it a go. Is giving it a go. Yeah. Of course, yeah, it's just starting. But with with like my Instagram, so a lot of the DMs that I get on a daily basis are through my stories. So everything that I post sort of in my stories is like background of my actual life. Like everything sure. on my Instagram is, you know, paints a picture of what, what my lifestyle is. But everything from my background, like my family and stuff like that, people like that stuff. You know, and people relate to that stuff as well. So it's just, for me, I think it's mixing it all up with like business and, you know, the background stuff that you do. Because like I said, people just relate with, with stuff like that. I'm not too sure how it works with like the TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously when you come over to Instagram, people will like filter through your Instagram. They'll look mm -hmm. at it as like a, I don't know, like a funnel or something like yeah. that. They will see your life there. With TikTok, I don't know. Do people do people go over to TikTok? They they go through profiles or. I think TikTok is harder to build like a, a trustful community because yeah. you do get a lot of um, like random people seeing your content. Whereas on Instagram, people follow you because they like what they're seeing. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. Um, but then I think that just opens doors to be kind of more creative. And I would say you're better at trying stuff out and experimenting on TikTok to see what works. Mm -hmm before moving to Instagram. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think like use all platforms as well. Definitely. Like, especially if you're doing a lot of video content on Instagram, mm -hmm. for example, this use it for TikTok as well. Mm -hmm. It's a video platform as well. So using different social media platforms and they're all free platforms to use. What I was gonna say, what I like about that is just cause it doesn't work on one platform doesn't mean it won't work Absolutely. on another. Cause I know at one point using UG, so when, you know, user generated content was quite fresh, repurposing that on Facebook as ads was getting them insane results because it was so different to what was already on that on that platform. Mm. Yeah, 100%. Um, and I think that's it. I hope you guys, uh, obviously, thank you for all for joining us. Um, 
hopefully obviously you've got a little bit more understanding of what UGC is, how it can be used, how it diverses, diversity is between different content and different platforms. Like, and like you said there, it may not work on TikTok, it may not work on Instagram, but like I said, the, the, the one thing that's underrated as well, you should always archive. If it's not mm. worth just archive it, post yeah. the same video with different captions five times a day and stuff like that. It's about being there and being pre present. Um, but again, like I said, if, if it's not evolving, you know, if you're not evolving, you're extincting, look into what other people are doing, but then make sure your branding is cohesive. Um, but again, thanks guys for, for joining us today. Uh, and we'll catch you soon. Cheers, guys. Thank thanks. you. Thanks.